Hi there, this is Carolyn Jasinski and I'm in the Gamby in Central Victoria. We're here for the MSA 2022 Caravan of the Year competition. This is Titan. The Titans are back from Queensland this year with their 480 hybrid Blackhawk with a few new updates. Ready to wow the judges. Let's see what Tim, John, Malcolm and myself have to say. Titan 480, the Blackhawk. It's an off-roader, it's a hybrid, but it's a couples fan. The price, like everything else, you know, in the last few years has been creeping up and at 83990 I know it's got a $6,000 upgrade with the electronics, but is that good value? I think it is. The 83990 when you look at that for a hybrid, it might seem steep, but once you sit inside and you soak up the comfort and the accessories and the whole layout and everything that's possible to do with it, it doesn't seem like such a stretch. The build quality is innovative. The care package is quite exceptional. There is that $6,000 upgrade with the inverter and upgraded batteries, etc. How does it fit into the market, Tim? It's interesting because hybrids have been around for a long time. You know, traditional types, your gold streams, your small Jacos and whatnot. And this has come out and it is punching at sort of that 100,000 plus caravan with the inclusions that it has. So I think from a value point, yeah, it's high for a hybrid, but it's low for what it actually has built into it. So I think it's very good value for money. It's one of the smallest caravans we had here, Tim. How did it tow? Oh, it looked flawlessly, to be quite honest. Small means it's got less air to push around, so it's always going to be a bit of an easier tow. Uh, but there were no qualms. There's no ESC built into it. I don't think it needed it. Uh, it's got good clearance. You know, like for a hybrid, it's quite nicely sat on the ground. And the drawbar, a little longer than perhaps you might want if you were going really serious into the bush. But then it does make it easier to park it and it does make it an easier tow. It's a hybrid, it's an off-roader, it's a getaway in the bush thing. How did it fit that role, Tim? It's not often I say things are near perfect, but I think from a suitability point of view, the 480 is near perfect for a couple's off-grid tourer, especially with that power pack upgrade, that stage two upgrade. We saw you could run the AC for more than four hours, but with the amount of solar on top, you get your batteries up pretty quick again. Decent amount of water storage, decent amount of gas, a good amount of storage and I think for a 480 the way they've done the external kitchen and the small bench inside yes it does forego internal cooking which some people do like but for me I think it's it's ideal. The build quality I thought the build quality was pretty good you know I like the idea of that robot wall of the chassis you know it's hot dip galvanized you've got those composite walls it looks the part it looks like it's been built properly there's a few little trim things inside that I think weren't probably up to scratch but you know overall I thought it was pretty good. The other thing I thought was tidy was all the electrics. I've seen some vans where it looks like someone just ran the wires where they like and hooks them up to the fuses and you have if you looked at it and tried to repair you have no idea what was going on but I think um, all the fuses were labelled which is very unusual in this business so yeah I thought that was well done. I love the layout in this one as far as livability goes it's got everything you need to hit the road whether you want to stay on the road or whether you want to go off grid. The bed takes pride of place, hard to get into if you're tall, easy to get into if you're short. A lot of storage, there's storage under the bed. Two fridges, one inside, one out. There's the cooking outside. Now I know someone mentioned it would be good to have a grill or something inside, I agree. I don't think it's a deal breaker though. It's got comfy seats, it's got TV, DVD combos, Bluetooth capability. The whole entertainment package is standard when you buy it, which goes to that value for money for the price as well. Gas and electric hot water, separate water tank, filters. Who knew you could have aircon off-road? I know it's not brand new, but that's that's a big plus. Livability, I just think, is it really hits the mark. There's little gadgets, like you said, there's those little hidey holes either side of the bed so you know you can somewhere to stick your glasses and your phone and you can charge things while they're there. It's an album on the head for me. Customer care is a big factor for particularly for an imported van. Do you think the customer care is up to scratch? I actually think this is um, possibly one of Titan's strongest attributes is their customer care. We at Caravan World have been pushing pretty hard for the industry to pull its socks up on customer care and I think Titan's one of the few who's actually having a real crack at it. So they, had, they gave us uh, an example of their warranty book. The crux of it is, is that they've got a warranty that is effectively full off-road, including salt, saltwater beaches, any gazetted track, and off-road. Aside from that, it was really interesting to see, and, and Mel picked up on this, that they give the buyer their wiring diagrams and plumbing diagrams too. So if somebody is handy and they do find a fault, which apparently is rare, they have a chance to actually maybe rectify it themselves. Now, Titan don't endorse that, but the fact that they trust the way they build their vans and 
that, that they give that to their buyers says to me that they are, you know, they'll stand behind it, they'll back it. I also think the X Factor is the fact that these guys listen to the market. There was a suggestion made they in their outdoor kitchen, they listen to what people say and then they take it on board and actually do something about it. I tell you what, there's one big X Factor that might not stay this way, but that's availability. So the guys were saying yesterday that they're importing so many of them and processing so many of them that if you were to buy one that was effectively off the plans, it could be as low as six to eight weeks. And in this market, that's unheard of. Most manufacturers are out 12 months. So that availability to me, like right now, that's huge. Will it stay that way? You know, only a call will, will give the answer to that.